Hi, I'm Aaron, and welcome to Keep Painting Minis, where we keep painting minis. Today we're going to paint the Adeptus Mechanicus Tech Priest from the Warhammer 40k universe, and be sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where we're going to learn a simple but super cool way to paint the glass receptacles where he stores his toxic fluids. So join me right back here, and let's get started. <laughs> And as I often do, since we will be base coating with contrast paints, I will begin with a primer that approximates Wraithbone, which for me is a Steinle Res White with a few drops of the Steinle Res Beige through the airbrush. We'll begin by base coating his cloak with a mix of Contrast Flesh Terror Red, Contrast Blood Angels Red, four to four there, equal amounts, and two drops to those four and four drops of drying retarder. See, one of the challenges with contrast is that it can pool in an undesirable way on the flat surfaces. Adding a little drying retarder gives me a little more time to wick off the contrast in places where it doesn't belong. So you'll see me here looking for the pooling heavily in some of the creases where it's a little too much and also importantly right there see on the flat surfaces and I've got that drying retarder so that I've got time without destroying the finish of the contrast paint to wick away pooling on the top of those folds in some cases. And so you'll see here that I really end up with a nice uniform coat without any unsightly splotching on the higher surfaces. In fact, in hindsight, I feel I wicked away a little too much from the creases and lost a little bit of my shading, which uh, I will come back and reinforce later with the opaque paints. Now we're moving on to just painting all of the black bits with one of my favorite black go-to opaque paints with great coverage. That's the Reaper Heavy Pigment Solid Black. And the black bits are going to be these corrugated hoses and his staff and the gun casings. Oh, and also the black liquid receptacles at the top of his backpack. You'll note that I don't paint the corrugated hoses leading to his face breather with the black. The box art, and I liked this color scheme, color those yellow with sort of a, a brown shading. So we'll do that later. And that's uh, what we've got going with all of the black covered. And now we'll get after all of the silver metallics with my favorite silver metallic color, the Vallejo Metal Color Line Dark Aluminum. And there is lots of silver on this guy, so just be patient. You've got the robot arms, you've got the armor, you've got the backpack, you've got the adornments on the staff, and trim on the gun. And note that I paint all of the metal areas with this silver, even though some of them ultimately are going to be copper. That just helped me pick out what was going to be metal so that I can come in later and choose what I wanted to be copper. It'd be easier for me to see. And here's what we have at this stage with all of the metal bits covered with my favorite silver base coat. And now we're coming in to add shading and depth to all of that metal with the good old standard Citadel Nuln Oil. And you'll see that I'm not swamping the silver parts with the Nuln Oil. I am covering the entire surfaces, but I'm focusing on getting the known oil in the recesses mostly so that I don't darken and tint the flatter surfaces more than necessary. Thank you. 
And you can see as always that that Nuln Oil does a terrific job of shading and adding depth to the silver metallics, especially when there are these features and protrusions like on that backpack. And here's what we have after the Nuln Oil shading. And now for some visual interest and variety, we'll pick out some of the metal bits for the copper color. This time with copper from my favorite Vallejo metal color line. And you'll see it's always helpful to use the side of the brush rather than the tip whenever you have the angle that allows it. And here's what we end up with now with all of the copper covered. And shortly we'll go in with Agrax Earthshade Citadel Shade to add depth and shading to the copper, similarly to what we did with the Nuln Oil. And now Agrax Earth Shade, a terrific color and dark tone, consistent with the leaning toward grungy look of our Tech Priest. And again, focusing on getting the shade into the recesses and not so severely on the flat surfaces. And a great tip is to focus on the rivets to be sure that our shade settles around those rivets to really make them pop visually. And here we have our Tech Priest, now properly shaded with the Agrax Earth Shade over the copper elements. Now we're coming in with one of my favorite opaque paint lines, the P Monument Hobby Pro Acryl. This is the golden yellow, the bright yellow, that I'm using for the wires and the corrugated tube to his breathing apparatus. Now I'll have to confess, as you'll see, covering with this golden yellow, and frankly most yellows, uh, is going to require several coats to get a nice dense yellow, even over white. Now something I often do when I need to cover with yellow, which I regret not having done in this case, is I actually undercoat with a light desaturated golden brown, and then I find that my yellow goes on nicely. Didn't do it in this case, figured I'd fight with it instead, but just be patient. You'll note that I actually missed the wire on his elbow, which of course I'll come back and take care of later. Now we're coming in with our contrast skeleton horde to shade and add depth to those yellow elements. And you'll see from this and my other videos that I have a particular approach to applying contrast, which is not so much to paint it on as to let it wick off the brush and then gently guide it into the recesses and babysit it with a dryer brush to wick 
back off any un undesirable pooling. For a real expert on applying contrast paints, check out Juan Hidalgo's Heavy Contrast series, which includes a video specifically on how to apply contrast paints. Now we're going in with the Monument Hobby Pro Acrylic Jade for the hoses that are found uh, in a variety of places on the model. And after a few coats for consistent coverage, Here's what we have so far. And now on to contrast skeleton hoard to shade the skulls, the one at the end of that corrugated tube. And then there's also one on the base. And there's also one at the top of the staff in the tech priest's right hand. And you might notice that I had painted the tech priest's hand with sort of a khaki brown, thinking that I would go in that direction with his skin color. But I decided against it and I went back over it with white and then you'll see that I shaded it with contrast. So specifically after repainting the flesh of the hand with a base layer of white, then I shaded with the contrast arithmetic blue. And once that shading was down, I then re-highlighted with the same white, as you'll see in the sort of finished image. And you'll also see that I painted his ring and the scratchy bit at the end of his finger with the silver. And next are the cuffs of the sleeves of his robe, which are going to get a base layer of the Monument Hobby Pro Acryl Ivory. And you'll need a couple of coats for solid coverage. And here's what that looks like before we go in with the shading. We shade the cuffs with the Skeleton Horde Contrast, as you'll see. And then we bring back the definition of the cuffs with an edge highlight of that Pro Acryl Ivory. And note that this lends itself to using the side of the brush to give us those nice crisp edges. And now we're going to reinforce the shadows in the creases of the robes with these three paints on the palette so that I can work back and forth with a glazed consistency of each from the wet palette so that I can get some decent blends from one tone to the next to establish some stronger shadows. So here's what that looks like with the shadows reinforced before we next go in with some brighter colors for the highlights on the top of the folds. Now 
our first highlight for the robes will be the Wild Rider Red. And again, working with a glaze consistency for smoother transitions. And for a final highlight on the robes, we'll go in with this very bright orange from the Monument Hobby Pro Acryl line. Again, working with a watered down glaze consistency for smoother transitions. <laughs> And here's what we have with the shadows reinforced and the highlights applied. And I think we ended up with a nice variety of tones and a decent blend from dark to bright. Next we're going to go in with this bright warm gray to dry brush the corrugated tubes. And I use this flat tip brush. It just lends itself to going crosswise against those corrugated tubes and also that texture on the staff. And here's what we've got so far with that dry brushing applied. Those corrugated tubes really take the dry brushing well, as well as that textured surface of the staff. Next we're coming in with this dark gray blue for the edge highlighting on the gun casings. Very carefully with the tip of the brush, the edge of the brush if you can catch the angle, or the tip of the brush very carefully. I like this blue highlighting. You can also go with that warm gray, but I really like a blue highlighting on a black casing of this uh, sci-fi weapon. And here's what we have with the edge highlighting done on the weapon casings. Next we're going to work on the lenses. There's a lens on the staff and on the tech priest's head and also on the skull. So we're going to base coat with white and that'll let us give them a glowing effect with some contrast which will come next. For the glowing effect on the lens we'll go with a 50-50 mix of Contrast Talisar Blue and Contrast Medium to thin it down. Thank you. 
is complete and they have a glowing look to them because of the white undercoat and the translucent contrast paint over the top. And coming into the home stretch, next comes my favorite part of this model. We're going to paint the bubbly toxic liquid inside these glass chambers on the top of his backpack. And so to do that we're going to take the shade color the darker color that we're going to start with, this jade is going to be the base coat. And we're going to carefully draw the top line, trying to keep it even with what we imagine would be sort of the plane parallel to the floor. And what's great about this is you can sketch out that top line and if you get it wrong you can go back in with your black and just fiddle with it until you think you have the level line right. And now we're going to go in and stipple in this bright yellow green over the darker color leaving a little bit of dark edge all the way around. And as we do this with some brush strokes but also some stipples it'll give it sort of a bubbly look. And you can actually take a little bit of ivory when you're all done with the stippling and trace that right at the top edge as you can see there and that really finishes off the effect and then there's just one more step which really brings it home so to really sell the glass receptacles we'll finish with a couple of thin layers of citadel hard coat i think we pronounce it hard coat apostrophe and that will give it that glossy finish that sells it as glass. So as you see, you shouldn't be intimidated by this. It's just so simple to do, but yet such an eye-catching feature that really tops the model off. And with that favorite feature complete, we're ready for the final reveal. Stage hand, the velour curtain please, and reveal. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed painting the model. New videos coming out every 10 to 14 days, so be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. And please share with anyone who might be interested. Don't forget to comment with all questions and critiques. Let me know what you might like to see in an upcoming video, and I hope to see you back here real soon. Meanwhile, and most importantly, stay motivated to keep painting your minis.